Hello, it's Jeannie. How are you? Some of you have asked for more shots of my cats, and Sputnik here has decided to oblige us with this request and honor us with his presence. If he's a good boy, he can stay. But if he starts to get a little squirrely, he will have to go out. Do you hear me? Do you hear me, butt butt? It's my butt butt boy. Anyway, how are you doing today? Tonight? This afternoon? I hope you are doing well. I had um, an interesting comment on my last video about the, the purple video, let's just put it that way, the purple video, from Ellen Smellen, and she said, she asked if I would be interested in doing a spooky reading, ASMR-ish, um, you know, and do a spooky, you know, given the theme of the month, Halloween. And so I think that would be a great idea. So uh, if you have any suggestions for something spooky, scary for me to read, let me know in the comments. And um, typically I do not do requests or, you know, um, requested role plays. It's just not something at this point that I'm comfortable with. I'm barely getting comfortable sitting down and talking. So we'll just keep it at a few things like that. So go ahead and let me know and I can do something eerie and spooky and I can read to you. Maybe something very Halloween-ish. Halloween ASMR. What do you think, Sputnik? What do you think, my handsome boy? Anyway, today's video is kind of piggybacking on something that I talked about in my 20 um, questions video when I hit 20,000. And that was some of my favorite books. And so what I wanted to do is go a little deeper into that and show you some of my favorite books that I have and or give you the names and authors of some of those books. Because I really think that books can be so transformative for someone's life because you grasp onto something, an idea, a thought, and you utilize it as a change for the better. And you realize that you have the power to make your life better. Stuff is always going to be happening. We're always going to be faced with triggers every day. If the minute we walk out of our house and get out into traffic, you know, there are things that just set us off. There are people that set us off. There are situations that set us off. And so I've found within books tools that I can use to be better at dealing with life. And I've been asked, what has made me so strong? Why am I different from anybody else in that regard? you know, in terms of loss, frustrations, you know, hardships. And I'm not different. I just have a different mindset about it. But I have to say, I wonder why I have cat hair all over. What I have to say is this. The books I've read have helped to create me and form me into the person that I am. 
and certain books have stood out in my life for years and years. And I want to share some of those with you. And I think books, for me, fall into a couple of different categories. There's the self-help and, and, you know, exploring kind of my own nature and how I fit into this world, into this planet, into this life. Who I am in that life, what I'm bringing to it. And then there's the escapism of, you know, a mystery there's the escapism of, uh, you know, a romance. Yes, I love you. And so, the books I'm going to go over with you today are some of those that stand out for me. Now, more likely than not, I'm going to end the video and then 10 minutes later think of 20 more, but you know, I could probably come up with 20 videos based on books. Yes, I love you. And he's wondering who I'm talking to, I think. Yes, I silly. 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 And Sputnik agrees these are good books. Hey, no chewing the books. So, some of the books I talked about in my 20 questions, and at the top of that list was one of my all-time favorite authors, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. He's French. You may know him from... The Little Prince. That, I think, is his most worldwide famous book. And if you read nothing else of his except The Little Prince, I think you would come away transformed, even a little bit. There's so many wonderful messages in that. And I just love the fox, the little fox, in that book. So that's one. Another one is Night Flight. And then I think my all-time favorite of his is Wind, Sand, and Stars. And I've read this one maybe half a dozen times. And if you think about that, something that would make me want to read it again and again and again, it has to be good. Because I know how it is. I know the stories in it. I know how it ends. And it's still special enough to reread. And so when I think about that, then I know... If I'm willing to reread it, I'm also willing to recommend it, and I do. So with any of these books, let me know either if you've read them or if you would be willing to buy them and read them or get them. Go to a used bookstore. You know, I love used bookstores. So Antoine de Saint-Exupéry and my French friends, I hope I said that right and honored him and his name you know, with a good pronunciation. If I didn't, I apologize. Anyway, so that's why. Now, another one that I really, really enjoyed and I look at often, and I may just open it up to some random page because it always turns out to be appropriate, and that is Echtolle. The Power of Now. And the basic premise of this is now is all we have. We don't have yesterday. We don't have a minute ago. We don't have 20 years ago. We have now. That is all we have is right here, right now. And yes, we have memories. 
But if we bring those into the now and relive them and reinforce those pathways, those neuro pathways, we just keep them strong. We keep that energy in the now of our pain, our past, our disappointments, our sadnesses, and we all have them. We all have them. But we also only have right now. And so being cognizant of what we're doing in this minute, what we're choosing in this minute, I think can be extremely transformative. So that's another one. Eckhart Tolle's uh, The Power of Now. Okay. Another great author is John Maxwell. And I love this little book, Make Today Count. Um, How can you make the most of today so that your tomorrow can be better? And so this is a just a great little easy read, a nice little guide. What do you think? What do you think, Bud Nick? Now, I love the writings of Esther and the late Jerry Hicks and the law of attraction. I truly believe in it because what you put out there is what you get back in some nebulous way. And they really do. Break it down to how that works. And whether you believe in it or not. And you do. I attracted you, didn't I? Whether you believe in it or not doesn't matter. It's kind of like you don't have to believe in gravity. But I wouldn't suggest walking off a cliff. Okay, you need to, you need to come down here. You need to come down here. Here, here. You can play with this. Come on. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. So, I think the more you expose yourself the more you open up the possibility of attracting something better. And this doesn't discount religion, if you're religious. This doesn't discount anything like that. I think it enhances it. And so, Esther and Jerry Hicks, The Law of Attraction, I think should be... um, read by everyone, and you take what you want from it, as with any book. It might be one sentence that changes your life, you know? Now, here's a book that I've read several times, and I've recommended it to so many people who have gone through divorces, breakups, heartaches, um, disasters, um, you name it, life, life. Life happens. Hard things happen. They just do. And this book helped me through some hard times as well. And I've got it so dog-eared and written on, highlighted, underlined, exclamation points. And it's called When Things Fall Apart. And this is by an American woman who became a Buddhist monk, Pema Chodron. And the way she writes and the way she talks about hard times, it isn't about getting over them or resisting them. Come on, lay down, lay down. Good boy, lay down. Good boy. They also sit and high five. But she talks about 
bending with things that happen. It's not that you have to resist it all. Remember, it's the branch that can bend that doesn't break. In a storm, if a branch cannot bend, it breaks off. It doesn't matter how big it is. But the branch that bends does get stronger and is able to withstand storms. So her writing is so beautiful. So if there is something you're going through, this is an amazing book to read. And the people I've recommended it to have thoroughly enjoyed it. And it's been very helpful to them. I'll show you something. All throughout this, I've got underlining. I don't know if that comes through. Highlights. And I love, I love this. She's talking about the moment, this very moment being the perfect teacher. Generally speaking, we regard discomfort in any form as bad news. But for practitioners or spiritual warriors, people who have a certain hunger to know what is true, feelings like disappointment, embarrassment, irritation, resentment, anger, jealousy, and fear, instead of being bad news, are actually very clear moments that teach us where it is that we're holding back. They teach us to perk up and lean in when we feel we'd rather collapse and back away. They're like messengers that show us with terrifying clarity exactly where we're stuck. This very moment is the perfect teacher, and lucky for us, it's with us wherever we go. Um, some of you have written to me, and you know who you are. Some of you are very deep thinkers, and I love listening or reading your comments and your emails, and you know who you are. And I would recommend this book to you because there's some very profound thinking in here. So, yes, you know who you are. I won't say your names. I almost did, but I won't. All right. So we are in kind of the self-help, spiritual kind of thing. Um, you know, really thinking outside of our normal box. And I've mentioned this book in that 20 questions, and it is. Speaks by Jane Roberts. And like I said, I read this in the early 70s. I think it was written in 1970 or 71, and I read it not long after that, maybe 72, 73. And I think this is my book from then because it's, you know, kind of falling apart at the spine. And this is one of those books that you can open to almost any page and just really be blown away. I've recently reread this. And again, when I reread a book, it has to be good because why would I reread a bad book? And, but this is one of those books that has really helped me through some of the hardest times of my life. And again, that is losing someone, losing someone close to me, children, you know, brothers. And, uh, so, Seth speaks. It's meaty. It's very meaty, I have to tell you. I warn you. Okay. I read this one in the 70s as well, and I think this is my copy from then. And it came out in...
1977. And so I probably read this, I think it was 78 or 79, and <clears throat> it is Richard Bach's Illusions, The Adventures of a Reluctant Messiah. Great book. He also wrote Jonathan Livingston Siegel. And that was a fantastic book as well. So I would recommend both of these, Jonathan Livingston Siegel and um, Illusions. Jacob, you know who you are? I recommend this to you. All right, now, I wonder why we have cat hair everywhere in this house. Sputnik, say hello. This is Sputnik. He is helping me. He is helping me with this video. And I think ASMR works on cats because he is super chill right now. Yes. Here is a book that someone asked me a long time ago an old friend of mine, and he said, when we were talking about this book, he said, how did this book find you? And I thought, that is an interesting way to put it. You don't find this book, it finds you. And when you're ready for it, it shows up. Okay? I know. Mm -hmm. And it is called The Cabalion. The Kabbalion, written by three initiates a long time ago. And I, this is one of those books that I've got dog-eared as well. I'm not going to say a lot about this, but this has been a very strong part of who I am. And like I said, none of these things take away from religion and only enhance, I think, whatever it is you do believe in. And I am not one to say there is only one path. My father once said, we were talking, oh, I was a little kid, and I asked him where we go when we die. Big question, right? And he said, well... It's kind of like we're all farm animals. There are cows, there are pigs, there are chickens, there are horses, you know, and there are ducks and all these different farm animals. And they're all out on the farm roaming around. They eat different things, they make different sounds, and they do different things. But at the end of the day, they all end up in the barn. They all make their way to the barn. And so, it's a truth, you know? We're all headed to the barn. Some will be there sooner, some will be there later, but we're all going to the barn, that big barn in the sky. And it's just the way it is, and that's the way I look at it. Sometimes it's sad when it's unexpected. I know this. But we're all going there. Some part of the barn. Cabalion, may this book find you. All right. Here's another great book. It's called Living Deeply. And I will list these in the description if you've missed any of them. Living Deeply, The Art and Science of Transformation in Everyday Life. And this is based on research program at the Institute of Noetic Sciences. And it's got lots of input from Ram Dass, um, Stanislav Krof, um, George Leonard. I mean, just lots of input from really big thinkers out there. And... 
Let me read this to you. I'm going to lean it on Sputnik. It says, this engaging book, the fruit of the Institute of Noetic Sciences ongoing investigation into the power and potential of human consciousness, brings what we know about how people achieve transformation off the mountaintop, down from the ivory tower, out of the laboratory, and into your hands. The groundbreaking insights were gleaned from representatives of many major world religions, including Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Native American cosmology, and modern, modern forms of spirituality, complemented by the latest discoveries from science. So this is a synthesis of science and wisdom from the world's greatest spiritual traditions, um, ancient and modern. So this is a great book too. I would recommend this to anybody, anybody, anybody. Okay. Now, when I was thinking about this and I've got books and books and books and, you know, I grew up with lots of books and, you know, we had a small house, but bookshelves everywhere, up and down the halls, in every room, everybody had bookshelves, tall bookshelves. And so, and we always got more and more books. We just haunted um, recycle bookstores, um, and that was the name of one in downtown San Jose, the recycle bookstore. So if any of you from the 60s and 70s and the San Jose era if you remember the Recycle Bookstore, it was great. They had everything, and it was like two or three levels. And I would, was always down in the Nancy Drew section. I loved Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys. Um, here are a couple of others that are worth mentioning. I wrote them down because they're in boxes somewhere. The Hobbit. The Hobbit. I read that in the fourth grade, and then the trilogy, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I don't know how many times I've read that, but it's so good. And the spider scene. If you've read The Hobbit, do you remember the spider scene? Atticott, Atticott, you know, when Bilbo Baggins was, um, you know, trying to uh, distract the spiders, and he had the ring on, and they couldn't see him, and they were going crazy and gnashing and trying to find them and, and get him into their web. So, and you know how much I love spiders. So anyway, The Hobbit, J.R.R. Tolkien, and, um, you know, and the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, fantastic readings. And of course, um, J.K. Rowling's, you know, Harry Potter, the entire series, I've read it. And, and of course, the movies were good, but the books, I don't believe a movie can really even begin to touch your imagination when it comes to, you know, what you see. The Harry Potter book, uh, movies did a good job, but still, they don't come close to your own imagination. So, the Harry Potter books. And we just lost Hagrid. I loved him. And um, not his spider, but I loved him. Let's see, what else? Um, okay, here's another great book. And tell me if you've read this. And if you haven't, I highly recommend it. I recommend all these books. Watership Down. Watership Down by Richard Adams. We read that. My family read that. And I think it was the late 70s. And we all read it at around the same time. And we were all speaking rabbit, believe it or not. This book, these rabbits had human characteristics, voices. You know, they each had a story. And it was such a profound book. It was very, very moving. So, great recommendation there. I love that book. Dan Brown. I love Dan Brown books. You know, oh my good. Robert Langdon, you know, all his, you know, he's an, an educator, a, you know, college professor, and he just knows so much. You know, the Da Vinci Code, um, Origin, um, 
angels and demons. And I just wait and wait and wait for his next books to come out. And those are escapism with some learning involved, you know, a little history. So I like those kinds of books too. Um, let's see, what else do have I written down? Mm. John Irving, great American author. Um, my favorite book by him was The Cider House Rules. Um, uh, that book was so moving. There was so much humanity in that book. And basically about a boy who becomes a doctor in a very... Mm, not so traditional way and but full of amazing heartfelt humanity so cider house rules um i enjoyed barbara taylor bradford's a woman of substance i read that in the mid 80s i remember and i just loved that book it it was great you know a little escapism a little romance but and i'm not big into romance things harlequin type romances you know but you know every now and then if it's a good one and and barbara taylor bradford she's an amazing writer um one that i am thinking about rereading because i enjoyed it so much the first time around was the clan of the cave bear um, Jean Owl, it was the Earth, um, Earth's Children series, and each book, and you start from Clan of the Cave Bear, and you go to Valley of the Horses, the Mammoth Hunters, Plains of Passage, um, Shelters of Stone, yes, I love you, and, um, the Land of the Painted Caves, each one talks, I mean, you watch this little girl grow from this clan she doesn't belong with. And it, 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 it's just so fascinating. It really is, and it's so well written. I'm thinking about rereading that series. Um, so, anyway... Those are just, like I said, I'm going to end this video, and I know I'll think of, you know, a hundred more, but that's okay. Um, so if you've got a suggestion for a spooky reading, something short, because, you know, I don't want to make it chapter after chapter, just something short, I'll do a spooky background. And no, it isn't real. <laughs> uh, anyway, let me know. And I'd love to see your short story, spooky suggestions, and I'll do a nice haunted Halloween-ish reading. And uh, I look forward to that. Like I said, I don't do many requests because I just, I don't want to let anybody down. I have heard so many, will I do a Princess Die role play? And I can't, I can't even touch that. So I think the answer to that is no. But thank you for the suggestion. I hope I've given you some food for thought. I love really good book suggestions. And so I wanted to give you these. If you're a reader and you haven't read some of these, I highly encourage you to check them out. Um, you get them through Amazon or a used bookstore or um, eBay, whatever, you know. And I want to say how proud I am of Sputnik here. Want to say goodbye, Sputnik? Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. We're going to sign off for now. We appreciate you very much. And I hope that not only 
you know, that you can find some comfort in just my voice. But ways of growing stronger, ways to figure out how to handle things in your life and get better from them. Be better, softer, deeper, wiser, and able to help someone else. Because I think ultimately it's the human touch that helps us help each other. And if I were to pick one book to start with for anyone who is going through some stuff, and there are some of you, it would be Pema Chodron, When Things Fall Apart. Even if things aren't falling apart, it's a great read. And The Law of Attraction. I would love nothing more than to hear your stories of transformation, your stories of breakthrough, your stories of success, your stories of new pathways, of new neural pathways, of how you persevered, how you learned, how you grew. Okay? I'd love to hear those. And if anything I say or do or recommend has any part in helping with that, You have no idea how much of an honor that is to me. Truly, I believe in you. I believe in your power. I believe in your strength. I believe in your softness. And I appreciate you. So for now, it's Mama J, Baba Nini, Jeannie, Signing off, bidding you peace and love.